Are we alone in the universe? Have we been visited by beings from beyond the stars? Has our government been hiding alien refugees from us and silencing those? who speak out. <laughs> Ooh, I can't answer those questions, but boy howdy, have they spurred some very imaginative stories over the years. Take, for example, the Men in Black series, the film that defined the lives of youths across the globe in 1997, but also opened their minds to the idea of a secret global agency that's sole purpose is to hide alien activity on Earth and erase the minds of those who know too much. One of my all-time favorite films, if I'm being honest, even to this day, and with the release of Men in Black International, it really got me thinking. Where did this idea come from? Let's wind the clock back a bit to what inspired the movie and the origins of the men in black in pop culture. Oh boy, this is gonna get weird. Buckle up. Cause it's gonna be a roller coaster ride. Activate your time travel doohickeys like Will Smith and Men in Black 3. Don't remember that movie? That's okay. And set your course to January 1990. To Air Cell Comics, who are about to publish a three issue series entitled Men in Black from writer Lowell Cunningham and artist Sandy Carruthers. This follows a secret organization that aims to hide supernatural entities and forces from civilization. Now, the story is pretty similar to what you saw in the films, including characters named Zed, J, K, and a neuralizer that is used to wipe people's minds. But the that's where the similarities stop. These comics don't just deal with aliens, but all sorts of supernatural entities. We're talking deep, zombies, werewolves, all of the bad guys. Also, these agents use lethal force when necessary to cover their tracks and silence witnesses. Gulp. This series ran until March 1990 and then returned once more in 1991 for a grand total of six issues. Now, this darker tone got a bit lost in the transition from page to screen, along with the other supernatural forces, and overall, I think it helped. Not to knock the original, but they got a lot of mileage out of the lighter tone and Will Smith's songs. Now, I didn't mention this earlier, but did you know these characters are technically Marvel characters? <gasps> Shortly after the release of the Men in Black comic, which has some of the most stunning covers, by the way, Air Cell Comics was purchased by Malibu Comics, who was then themselves purchased by Marvel Comics. Bit of a Russian nesting doll situation. Marvel did release a few one-shots following the first film, but no word on that front if we'll ever get any follow-ups. Now, we know the direct inspiration for the film franchise, which is fair to say that they've taken a few liberties with the source material. But what inspired the original comic? Where did the idea of the Men in Black come from? Well, grab those time turners and phone boxes and Avengers quantum watch plot device Ant-Man thingies and wind it back to June 21st 1947 hopefully you landed somewhere near Maury Island in Puget Sound Washington take of a view let's focus on Harold Dahl and Fred Crisman two harbor patrolmen who on that fateful day in June claimed to have seen six donut shaped objects in the sky they claimed to have witnessed these crafts dump some sort of metallic slag or molten metal onto a fishing boat that then broke an arm of one of the fishermen and killed their dog. <laughs> now here's where the story gets interesting. Following this sighting, Grisman and Dog claim to have been confronted by, can you guess? It's the title of the video. Yes, a man in black. This man threatened them to keep this story under wraps, claiming, I know a great deal more about this experience of yours than you will want to believe. <laughs> Very spooky. These two men got a hold of the material that had fallen from the crafts and shared it with Mr. Kenneth Arnold, one of the first ufologists, ufologists, ufologists. Now after this, Kenneth called in an Army Air Force Intelligence Officer, Lieutenant Frank M. Brown, to investigate the debris. Why wouldn't they send someone up? You know what I mean? These UFO sightings were just beginning, and if this man had credible proof, why not take a closer look? Upon arrival, the intelligence officer immediately identified the material as his regular old aluminum. Nothing special about it. We are aware that Lieutenant Brown did not share this information with the men at this time, but unfortunately, on his way back to California, his plane caught fire and he unfortunately crashed. But after this, we did learn pretty quick that all of this was a hoax because the men themselves admitted to lying about the whole thing. Honestly, I might come clean to if a man actually died because of my dumb, dumb lie. They weren't even harbor patrolmen. It didn't stop Kenneth Arnold, though, from sharing his tale with Ray Palmer. Nope, not the Adam from DC Comics, all right, nerds? The creator of Fate Magazine, a leading publication for all things alien. Way more legitimate. Together, these men wrote The Coming of the Saucer. 
Brothers, where they retold the Maury Island incident as well as some of Arnold's own encounters. Fun fact, Ray Palmer is even credited with the creation of the idea of UFOs. One of the original ufologists. Ufologists. From here, go ahead and scoot forward just a little bit to 1956 when author Gray Barker published They Knew Too Much About Flying Saucers, a book that popularized the idea of the men in black and cited the Maury Island incident as well as others. Now, the idea of a secret government agency that covered up alien and supernatural encounters was pretty tantalizing. Specifically, the men in black were described as human-like figures who always traveled in groups of three. Drove long, black cars. The claim was that these men would intimidate eyewitnesses into keeping quiet about their encounters. Barker went on to flying saucers and the three men, which gave us the idea that the men in black could themselves be extraterrestrials. Ho <laughs> it's a pretty alluring idea, right? But once again, we have to take a closer look. For instance, Gray Barker, known for writing about many cryptozoological figures, has himself admitted privately to being skeptical about most UFO claims and has even been caught creating hoaxes and embellishing stories famously. It has been said that he would regard most ufology as a joke. Hey man, as an ology at the end of it, take it seriously. Funny anecdote, Gray got a hold of some US State Department letterhead and would falsify letters from government officials to ufologists praising their research of aliens and UFOs. Now, did men in black suits possibly approach some of the ufologists and ask them to pipe down about what they saw? Maybe. Maybe they saw a plane they weren't supposed to see. Maybe a bunch of birds they were trying to keep to themselves. But nothing as fantastic as the comics, novels, TV shows, and movies would have us believe. The last thing I'll leave you with is that some individuals have said that their encounters felt very supernatural to the point where they related the men in black to possibly being Lucifer. So I get it. A man in a slick black suit trying to tempt them to keep quiet. And that, my friends, is where I'm gonna have to go ahead and pump the brakes and say we've gone too far down the rabbit hole. Regardless of what you consider true, the history of the Men in Black is a wild ride that we encourage you to check out for yourselves. And check out our review for Men in Black International while you're at it, unless it's not up yet, which might be true. Either way, subscribe to Might Be Awesome. Check out our other deep dives. I'm Sam, and this has been Might Be Awesome.